walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But Jesus said to them, Ego a me, it is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take Jesus into the boat, but immediately the boat reached the land towards which they were going. The gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. And do be seated. A couple of interesting stories to talk about, one in particular. But this morning, I want to turn around my tendency uh, to ask you questions in my sermon. Instead, I want you to ask me questions. And I'll try to answer them the best I can. And to help, I'm going to even give you the questions to ask me. <laughs> That's not cheating, okay? So, so someone asked me if I believe in the Bible. No. But I do believe in the God the Bible reveals to us. The one God known to Jews and Gentiles. The God who creates and redeems and sustains our life and faith. Okay? Now ask me if I believe in prayer. No. <laughs> but I do believe in the God who invites us to pray. Who promises to hear our prayer and answer our prayer in God's own way. Now ask me if I believe in eternal life. No. <laughs> if by eternal life you mean just some extra days added on to our life after death. But I do believe in the God who promises us abundant life, promises us new life, life forever in God's heart and hands and God's presence. And I believe that even now God gives us a foretaste of that feast to come. Last one. Ask me if I believe in miracles. Guess what my answer is? No. <laughs> no. But I do believe in the God who is wonderfully powerful, kind, loving, compassionate, and engaged with us so that there are things that do happen in life that can only be described as amazing and miraculous. So my hope, by asking you to listen carefully, uh, that in your ear, in your heart, you caught a pattern here. That I'm calling your heart to a subtle difference, but an important and essential one. Faith and trust and hope in God only belongs in one place, and that is in the one God that we know as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and we know as Creator and Redeemer and Sustainer. It is God alone who seeks and holds our believing, trusting faith, right? As Luther wrote to parents and to kids in talking about the first commandment, he says, remember, we respect love and trust in God alone above all things. And that everything else that I listed is really just a tool, a means by which God works good for us in our life. I think that brings us to this morning's lesson, the feeding of 5,000 people with only five small buns and, and two small fish, right? I set you up this way because it's tempting to call this story a miracle. I mean, what else would you call it when Jesus feeds 5,000 hungry people, not just a little snackable, not just an appetizer, but enough of a meal for 5,000 that all 5,000 were filled to satiation. Think of Thanksgiving after uh, the meal, right? Matthew, Mark, and Luke also tell this story in fact, it's the only miracle story that shows up in all four Gospels. But for the Gospel of John, it's not a miracle story. Did you hear what he calls it? See, I get to ask you some questions too. In the lesson, John calls this story a sign, not a miracle. 
For John, the purpose of this meal is not to impress and amaze. It's simply, first of all, to feed the hungry. And then it's also a sign, a sign for all the people that God's power is indeed present in Jesus Christ, right? It's a sign. What do signs do? Point, point us somewhere. And this is a sign that points us to Christ. So, the big meal, it's a tool, a means by which everyone is to see God at work in Jesus the carpenter or Jesus the rabbi or Jesus of Nazareth or Jesus the son of Joseph or the son of Mary, whatever you call him, that God is at work in this Jesus who will be Jesus the Messiah. So maybe, since John wants this to be a sign, I should ask you to ask me one more question. Ask me if I believe in signs now. No. <laughs> no. I still believe in only God, who has, who, start again. God who is at work, is at work all the way through the Bible stories to give us signs to see, signs to follow, signs that lead us straight to Jesus Christ and lead us towards a more just and compassionate world. So let me ask you a question. When is a miracle not a miracle? There you go, when it's a sign. Kathy, you got that right. When its purpose is not to fill us again with amazement and wonder, at least only, but to fill us with a faith in a God of abundance, when all we can see is scarcity and our own inadequacy. When is a miracle not a miracle? When its purpose is to show us a God who takes what little we have to offer and uses it to fill up the hungry of heart and spirit and stomach with baskets full left over. When is a miracle not a miracle? When we say with those first disciples, well, of course there's not enough, even a little for everyone, and God says to us, oh yeah? Watch and see. Watch and see a sign of what I can do and what I will do. John says this story teaches us that Jesus satisfies the hungry and the hungry of heart and soul as well. He says, Jesus is the wonder, wondrous bread, the bread of heaven come down, torn apart and given out for the life of the world, for all and not just some, right? Now in the synoptic lessons, that's Matthew, Mark, and Luke because they all sound pretty much the same. Jesus tells the disciples, he tells them, you give them something to eat. But in John's telling of the story, Jesus himself gives them something to eat. And in our understanding of this story, we see it as a sign of Jesus giving himself to us and to all as the bread of life, as the source of abundant life forever, as he takes and thanks and gives that bread away, right? The story says that when the people saw the signs, signs that Jesus was doing by healing the sick, when they saw the sign of him feeding the 5,000, when they saw the sign of him walking on the water, they wanted to make Jesus king. That was an oops, okay? The sign was meant to show them that God was making Jesus savior and redeemer, not king of the earth, but king of all creation. They misread the sign that uh, Jesus was giving them. So here we go in another direction a little bit. It seems that it's possible to misread the signs that God gives us. Yet I think lately there are signs that point us and the world to a renewed hope and trust in God for all things good and just and right. So I'm gonna give you a sign that you may or may not believe to be a godly sign, but there is what I believe, what I believe to be a modern sign of God's at work, moving us towards hope and justice in spite of all the voices that try to tear us apart. 
last Sunday. So here we go. Last Sunday, the uh, most powerful man, or better, the man in the most powerful office in the world, uh, stepped away from that political office. Like him or not, what followed in its wake was not a miracle. Don't take it that way. But it does seem quite miraculous in its effect as a sign of renewed hope in this way. So we're told on that day, in the midst of all this turmoil we're facing out in the nation, that a record $120 million was raised in one day for new leadership, that a record 28,000 volunteers stepped forward in one day to participate, that a record 40,000 new people who had never voted before signed up to be engaged in this process. All of that in support of potential shepherding that promises not to be a king or a queen for a day, not a dictator on any day. See, the, the sign, I think, is this. It's language that's centered not on service, not on domination, on reconciliation, not retribution, on restoration, not revenge, on inclusion and not division, on truth, not lies, on service, not of self, but service of others. Now, oh, regardless of what you think, I think that it is at least a sign of hope and change. Now, you need to hear this too. It is not a sign that God is taking partisan sides. You vote for whomever you are led to support. That's your right. That's part of your freedom to choose. It's not a part of a church or a preacher's right to tell you what to do. But perhaps you could see that what is happening can be seen of the Spirit's work, active and living in this world, as a sign of God's overall intention to point us all towards the healing of division, the erasing of hatred, the embrace of all under God's umbrella of compassion and inclusion. Now, I think it may prove to be a sign, however the vote goes, to be a sign that can feed the hearts of millions with baskets full of hope left over for us to share with everyone. It seems to me that would be indeed a not so subtle miracle that you could believe in if we are changed in that way. Now, to him who by the power of work within us is able to accomplish abundantly more, far more than we can ever imagine, amen. amen. That peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. <laughs>